We turn now to the Republican governor of Utah, Spencer Cox. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's good to talk face to face. I know you're on this coast because of the National Governors Association and meetings there. And the group's putting some special focus on mental health, but broadly protecting kids. When it comes to children, firearms are the leading cause of death among kids. The Salt Lake City Tribune pointed out that at the state level, there's been an impulse to danger to ban dangerous things for kids on many levels. You've talked about social media. Uh, you focused on transgender issues. But that doesn't extend to firearms, even at the state level. Why is that? When you look at the gun numbers in the state of Utah, mm -hmm. the, those numbers increasing are not being driven by people getting caught in the crossfire or you know kids shooting each other. It's being driven specifically by mental health and suicide issues. Now we're doing more to, to help keep guns away from kids, keep them locked up, but but. What is it that's that's driving that desire to say life is not worth living anymore? And, and how do we as a society collectively uh, work to make sure the kids know that it is going to get better and, and uh, there, there is a reason to stay here? That's a huge focus for us as well. Your state is the first, as I understand it, to restrict social media access by minors, although that law doesn't go into effect until March of next year. Correct. Um, you just had this judge this week um, make a, a determination that the Biden administration uh, should be prohibited from discussing with social media companies. Anything that encourages, pressures, or induces in any manner the removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content. Is that ruling going to affect what you are trying to do at the state level to protect young kids from harmful content? I don't think so. I, I don't understand. That, that's, that's more of a content restriction. I'm sure we'll have social media companies suing the state of Utah. In fact, we're going to be suing social media companies for, for the harm and damage that they're, they're causing our young people. I, I suspect that at some point the Supreme Court will weigh in on this decision when it comes to restricting youth access. There's not just a correlation between social media use and an increase in, in suicide, anxiety, depression, self-harm. Um, th there is a causal link there. There are 18 different states that have now enacted laws that restrict in some way access to gender transition care for kids. In Utah, you have said that you are just pausing access to that kind of care. You're not banning it. Do you have an end date to that pause? What specifically is the kind of data and research you need to see to say you will allow for it? Yeah, so we, do, we don't have an end date, um, but uh, we, we we do need more data and more information. This is such a charged topic it is. that it's been uh, it's been impossible, I believe, to get good information um, here in the United States right now because half the country doesn't want to touch it, and, and the other half is convinced that they already know the answer. And so I, I've really tried to look elsewhere um, at, at conversations that are happening in other countries, um, specifically in Europe, around around this where it's not quite as charged. Um, looking at, at at Sweden and Finland and and France and, and the UK, uh, other countries where they don't have the same culture war battles that we're having here. And they're also pushing pause. I, I mean, many of those countries are saying, look, we're, uh, this is- a specific part of it? Is on it both. hormone treatment, puberty blockers, surgery? Both, all of, it, all of, all of the above, yeah. Because the yeah. Uh, American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, and the American Academy of Pediatrics have said this kind of care um, they, they've rejected the claims that it is yeah. harmful. Yeah, all but very political groups. And, and again, I, I, I don't. I, I believe that they are politicized. Those groups are politicized. The I American don't believe, Academy of Pediatrics. I absolutely okay. do. Yes, yes. On, on this issue, it, it, it's impossible to get unbiased information out of the United States right now on this issue. I, I just don't believe it. So just on the numbers, of 73 million children in the U.S., there were just 56 genital surgeries related to dysphoria between 2019 yeah. and 2021, according to the study by Komodo Health and Reuters. Yeah, do you have the numbers on uh, on on hormone therapy and 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 in those puberty years? blockers? What, in what the is the year? number? It, it, they're you. exploding. We we went from like 10. 10 years ago to several hundred this past year. Mm -hmm. I mean, th those numbers, and again, in this Utah? is in is Utah alone. Yeah. And you don't know what's driving Well, that's, that's what these scientists in other countries are actually trying to figure yeah. out, where in, in the United States, we're putting our head in the sand and saying, we're not even gonna talk about this or look about this. You can't even have a discussion about it. Right. In other countries, they're saying, 
something is happening, hundreds in my state, thousands all across the country um, that are making requests for this. Yep. And they have, they're, they're presenting with several other mental health issues as well. I mean, the numbers we saw, the trend is definitely up, but um, they're still pretty small in terms of surgeries and mastectomies. But, but only, I, I only in terms of surgeries. Data. Yeah, the, the other data, and, and you can look anywhere, yeah. um, this is not unique. Um, it, it, yes, there the aren't a lot of up. surgeries sure. happening, but the trend, it's not just up, it's up exponentially. It's, it's, it's a hockey stick increase. It, it's still a, a small percentage though. Um, but, but I hear your point on wanting more data. Can I ask you specifically about a bill um, that is now law. They, it, it, you had an interesting stance on this. You rejected the bill initially. Your legislature overrode your veto. It's now law. Um, and it would bar transgender students from participating in uh, girls' sports. According to the reporting at the time, there were just four transgender players in the entire state out of 85,000 student athletes. At the time you argued for empathy when you vetoed this, you said there are, these are just four kids trying to get through the day. Rarely has so much fear and anger been directed at so few. Why didn't that call for empathy persuade your party? Why did they need to write something to affect four kids? In my veto letter, I, I said, I actually agree with what you're trying to accomplish here. I, I think it is wrong to have a, you know, a, a, a transgender female, um, a person who was, who was born a male, uh, taking scholarships, uh, t records uh, away from people. The, 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 the pen swimmer is the, the example of that, right? Okay. The example that everybody uses. And, I, and so that, that was my point. I, I, that should not happen. What we were negotiating in the state of Utah was something that would allow some kids to play and others not to, depending on their, their physical capability. I do believe that there is a, a lack of compassion and empathy in our politics today. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we have a toxic division. The culture wars are happening. Um, there are culture warriors on all sides that are you know, trying to change, trying to get their way, trying to cancel others or, or prevent others from, from being able to, to do what, what they want to do. And, 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 and it's definitely a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Utah can be an example of, of being a little better on that side. There are at least six current or former governors, yeah. Republican governors running for president right now. Can any of them defeat Donald Trump in a primary? Well, I, to I will, lead your party. I hope so. I like governors. Um, I think governors are great. I Even think governors have real experience. Um, the, the great thing about governors is we actually have to get stuff done, mm -hmm. right? We, we can't just do the performance thing. Um, you have to, you know, potholes aren't, aren't partisan. Right. Um, you, you, have to, you have to do those kind of things. And I think we have lots of amazing choices. And um, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can, we can turn the page um, and, uh, and, and, and try something else. Someone who can win, which I think is important, and uh, I think any of any of those governors uh, could could win, and and I certainly hope we'll give them a chance. Governor, thank you. I'm glad to have you here in person, and uh, hope to have you back. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you.